Welcome to Forrester's Creative YouTube channel. Today, we're doing our first episode of a new series where we interview local artists and crafters and makers. For this episode, we have Forrester's Creative member, Lucy Jane Pennybright here, who is a seamstress and cosplayer. Lucy, why don't you tell us some more about the Lucy Jane Pennybright brand? Sure. Um, I've been doing Lucy Jane Pennybright for close to seven years now. Okay. Um, it doesn't seem like it's been that long because uh, like a lot of ventures, it starts out really slow, gaining steam at first, and then a lot of things happen all at the same time. Um, so this year has really been booming. Okay. Um, so I started uh, initially, uh, it started with a Christmas gift. Um, so my dad's side of the family is very accustomed to me making gifts mm -hmm. instead of purchasing them. Um, I've been an artist since I could hold a crayon. <laughs> and so they're used to, you know, making things. Uh, and my cousin's new daughter loved elephants. I don't know if she still likes them, but she liked them then. And so I said, okay, I'm going to make her a plush elephant. Okay. So I searched around for... Uh, pattern that I liked uh, and I came across patterns by this wonderful Australian um, lady. Uh, her name is um, Pauline MacArthur and okay. she does funky friends factory patterns. <laughs> Lots of alliteration, kind of hard to say. <laughs> uh, but her funky friends patterns are adorable. Uh -huh. I don't know how she thinks in three dimensions. Uh, when I'm using the pattern I don't have a problem with it because it's already it's all set all out set there. Out. Yeah. Um, my forte is actually uh, color theory and choosing um, which which we can will go yeah, yeah what'll go good together and um, adding embellishments of tutus and those kinds of things modifying what what she's done okay um, with express permission okay of course of course so <laughs> we, so you have like a, a I, agreement, with her. agreement with her and i think you've told me before she's in australia or mm -hmm. something like that so you guys really don't have a competition not a being that far apart from each other um, you know she's she knows that i respect all of her hours of work to make the pattern and okay. then she allows myself and uh, any of her other um pattern users to make them in limited quantities. Okay. Um, it's not something that feasibly I could ever mass produce anyway. Right. Um, it's much more of a one at a time. Local type yes. thing. Everything that I do is hand sculpted, even though it's made on a machine from a pattern, it's still very much one of a kind. Um, cool. The eyes are never going to be exactly the same because they're all hand embroidered. Um, the sculpting is... Unique for each one. Um, okay. Some of them come together and they each have their own personality. You might have so. to like, pick one up while you're Sure. Like this. Yeah. They're just, um, just they're so much camera. fun. And the elephant was the first one. She has something close to 50 animals by She's now. It's very uh, Christmassy. It looks like these two at yes. least are for a holiday season. Yes. So we're in the throes of prep for peak season. Okay. Um, these are actually only just two elephants of. A variety. I have a Star Trek one that's due this mm -hmm. week uh, as an order, um, and I do make. So I'm a giant nerd. Um, right. I love Star Trek, and I'm okay with Star Wars. I like Trek better. <laughs> she you know causes that's, that's completely acceptable some discussions <laughs> in our family. Uh, my mom's a huge Star Wars fan, and I like oh, Trek. No. So no, we balance it. You okay. know, it's, we gotta we gotta have. We gotta rep both teams, right? Right. Um, no, but I love Doctor Who and I love uh, all of the major geek fandoms, and uh, really, um, it these just serve as an outlet for that. Um, <laughs> I have, you know, exploding TARDIS fabric for. Right. Um, I'm working on a hippo. And exploding turtles. I have sea turtles. I have. Oh, I, I wish that I could have like one of everything to show people. Right, and um, we we'll get to uh, kind of where you are right now, and mm -hmm. the reason we only have four plushies yes. now. But Please just to add on, speaking of holiday season, yes. for each of these episodes, we are doing a craft while we discuss the artist's current uh, activities and 
and what they're doing with their art, but just to have something to do with our hands so we're not like, Ooh. you know, uh, <laughs> we have these crafts. Today we're doing a pumpkin themed, uh, trying to do that kind of Pinterest centerpiece type thing. We've got paint, we've got glue guns, I've got these little uh, butterflies here and glitter. So, and some little jewels. So, Lucy and I are going to paint our pumpkins while we continue to talk about Lucy Jane cool. and uh, get into some info on the cosplay you do too. Yes. So, okay. Lucy Jane uh, also has been um, just an outlet. Uh, it's mostly just an umbrella. Okay. Um, I make jewelry, I do um, custom bookmarks, I've done. Um, yeah, the costume stuff mm -hmm. as well. It's it it sort of just holds whatever in terms of creativity. And um, I got uh, keeping with the geek theme. Mm -hmm. uh, so last year was my first Dragon Con. Oh, um, I've been trying. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. <laughs> I've been trying to go to Dragon Con for ten years. Wow. Uh, and for whatever reason, I had a lot of personal things just prevent me from being able to go. Um, but finally, the stars aligned. Hmm. And after a full decade, I said, this is it. This is the year. Um, I had uh, just left my retail job Okay. Um, the month before. So that was new and exciting. I was like, I'm so free. Oh, dear. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, but it was exciting. And um, so it was my first Dragon Con. And I went as uh, a character of rather obscure origin, if you are not familiar kind of with the artist, illustrator, people. A lot of people didn't know who I was, but that was okay. Yeah, I mean. Um, it's such a niche thing anyway when you cosplay. Uh, it just deter depends on who has seen what you're doing. Right. It is determines who, who actually you get to talk to and meet up with. So my favorite illustrator, one of them, is Brian Kessinger. Okay. Um, he did the badges for the Dragon Con the year before. Oh, okay. Um, he's out of... Uh, Might have been one I went to. Yeah, he, he's out of California. Um, and he was very sad to miss that year's Dragon Con. I would have actually been able to meet him oh. as his creation. That would have been fun. But he had another commitment. Uh, he works for Disney as well. Nice. And then also his uh, commissions and things have, have really taken off. Um, so his character, his main uh, illustration is a steampunk girl named Victoria and her land octopus. Uh, she has a pet octopus named Otto. Well, that's cute. And so I, there is a, there is a print um, that I do actually own of them. Uh, she's dressed up kind of in the vein of Rose Tyler uh, with a British flag corset. So she's And very, for those that don't know, Rose Tyler was a companion a in Doctor, Doctor Who. Who. Yeah, it's Doctor Because we, we will probably have a few viewers that are not. That's true. That's true. Not in the know in when the... it comes to some of the nerdy stuff. Uh, so they're leaning out of the TARDIS, um, which is the uh, time traveling, for lack of a better word, spaceship. Right. Um, don't tell the fandom I described it that way. They'll hate me. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the best way, I think, to, to actually. Yeah. For the layman, like that's. Right. It's a, it's a blue police call box, uh, yeah. English or British call box. So they're leaned, they're in the, just in the, in space, and they're leaning out of it on their adventures, you know, and, mm -hmm. um, Otto has the signature red fez, and so Otto's wearing the red fez, they're leaning out of the TARDIS, going on their adventures, and I said, I want to be that. Yeah. So I ordered off of Hot Topic a TARDIS party dress. And then I proceeded to embellish the ever-loving snot of it. <laughs> um, it. But I got to march in the parade in it. And um, But, you know, Victoria, even Doctor Who, tra time traveling Victoria. And I had and I had all the time travel. So, like, I geeked out and I had Hermione Granger's Time Turner <laughs> from Harry Potter. And the new Alice in Wonderland movie had just come out. 
so I had her chronosphere, the time mm-hmm. time machine. Um, so yeah, I was just all time travel tricked out. It was awesome. Well, that's fun. And uh, I made the brass goggles and everything on my steampunk hat. Now, was this the first time you ever cosplayed or just your first Dragon Con? Mm, was it my first cosplay? I mean, technically, because I was doing it as a character, mm-hmm. I did do Civil War reenacting for a dozen years. Oh, wow. So it was not, wow. it was not my first rodeo in terms of like sewing a costume and actually right, dressing right. up. Um, but I think cosplay in terms of like going to a convention, uh, yeah, it was my first go round so there. So, how did you originally learn to sew? To like, how did you get to the point where you uh, you started making costumes well, and the, things like that? The Civil War reenacting really came into play in that because, um, you know, they used a lot of fabric with those big bell dresses, mm-hmm. and fabric's expensive. It is, and the people who were selling the historically correct. Uh, costumes for us to to dress up in. Um, so when you go to a reenactment, uh, you have the soldiers and stuff, but they encourage the whole family to get involved. Okay. Um, so all these women have you know either work dresses or ball gowns, and they host a most events host a ball. Um, really. After the spectators, so people can come in and watch the battle. Right. And then after they go home, mm-hmm. after like the day is done and the sun starts to set, uh, we stayed camped out there, you know, for three days um, to do the whole weekend. And we'd go in everything that we could make be from the 1800s, we did. Um, it was kind of a, a rite of passage to actually see how period authentic you could get your camp. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted ball gowns to wear to the dances. Mm-hmm. And rightfully so, the people uh, the settlers who were selling all of the costumes, uh, it was a good $300, 400 right. for a nice ball gown because... There's a bunch of those. Yeah, I mean, their time and their labor, and like now being a seamstress, I understand that that is a fair price for their right. talent, their time. Right, that's actually really inexpensive. Good. Yes. Um, so being a college student, or not even quite a college student, I went to my first reenactment when I was a junior in high school. Mm-hmm. And um, I think I might have even still been a sophomore. But, um, you know, I'm a college kid. I don't have the money for a $400 ball gown. Are you kidding? Right. And um, it, it is a hobby, so it costs a lot of money to do. Right. Um, but so I said, okay, well, I want a ball gown that looks like something I had in my head. And I, and I said, well, I'm going to learn how to do this. Um, the guy I was dating in college at the time, uh, he also did World War II um, history programs for kids. Oh, cool. And so the very first thing I ever sewed, so, learned to sew, sewed is, sew, is sewn? Sewed. <laughs> is that, is sewed an actual, is it past tense, to sew, sewed? I don't know, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> I anyway. think sewed is right. Is it sounds right. Is it right? I'll look it up. Okay. Um, the very first thing that I ever finished, uh, on my own, uh, my grandmother brought out her 1960 Merritt Singer, or rather Singer Merritt, uh, Singer's the brand and the Merritt was the model. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's pink, like so 1960s, like it was, Whoa. and it's, you know, the real deal. Um, my great, her mother, my great grandmother bought it in like 65. Wow. And so we took it to uh, the sew and vac um, machine shop, had mm-hmm. it oiled, serviced, made sure everything was running okay. She taught me how to thread it, um, which is arguably the worst part about sewing is learning to thread your machine. Yeah. And she explained how everything worked, and I just started going too. And I made um, a little 1945. Um, US, USO um, dress with a little peplum in the back and cute. It was adorable and um, and then I just kept working. I would make uh, little sundresses and then I went to ball gowns and then I got smart and taught myself how to save time, money, and frustration by getting better tools 
Um, I got an eyelet setter, which is like a, it's kind of like a pair of pliers. Mm -hmm. You punch a hole in the fabric and then you have the little metal grommet. You can, you can okay. cut a hole in so it makes like a lacing loop. Right. Best 20 bucks I ever, <laughs> ever spent. Because uh, they didn't have zippers back in the 1800s. It oh, right. I didn't even think about that. Buttons and laces, yeah. So that was fun. Well, that's cool. I mean, that's a really original way. Like, I think most of the seamstresses I've talked to or, or nodistes or whoever, they uh, learned from their mother or they learned when they were a small child. Or it's interesting that you've gotten to be you know, this level of skilled, <laughs> but you only started when you were almost in college. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, that's very impressive. Um, so aside from your original inspiration with having to build dresses and stuff, what inspires mm -hmm. you when it comes to Lucy Jane and your cosplay and this uh, kind cosplay. of stuff? So very lately I have embraced the nerd like so hard. <laughs> uh, I, was an, I was a nerd, I was a geek before it was cool, but because it has become more mainstream, then I feel like I'm exposed to more things than I was right. when it wasn't cool. Um, tabletop gaming is making a huge return. I, yeah, I've seen that lately. A lot of mm -hmm. people that I went to school with that I played tabletop games with uh, have here, really gotten back into it. Here in Douglasville, actually, the Irish Bread Pub is getting games up on Wednesdays. Really? I'm going to be DMing a game. You should totally come and I, play at my I table. might. Other, you should, you other should. West Georgia people, uh, if you want to go get into tabletop gaming. Yes. and it's Starting all, Wednesday soon? Yeah, this coming Wednesday. I'm going to oh, be there. Oh, this coming Wednesday. Okay. Um, and mine is going to be all homebrewed. Uh, so it's not going to be a mod. It'll be based on some models. You know, I have ideas. Um, right. But all of mine is just going to be a world that... I made up in my head probably when I was still in high school. Cool. I've always been, uh, so writing is in my blood, in my family, and I just embrace it. Uh, my mom's an author. Um, she's working on a screenplay as well as some children's books. Um, like, it, it's in our family. Uh, so, I mean, really, you're kind of a multi... Multi-level geek. Yeah. yeah. Well, multi-talented person, I was going to say, huh. with writing and sewing and painting pumpkins. <laughs> yeah, but the D&D &D has really uh, begun to inform my cosplay. Mm -hmm. um, so this year's Dragon Con, uh, I had just last February, or this past February, this February, mm -hmm. um, back in last November, I got started into D&D. &D. And um, so then there is a group of voice actors on Twitch, on the Geek and Sundry Twitch channel. Okay. Um, they play a game called Critical Role. Now, is this a game they made up, or is this a game is, that you can buy? It is 5e D&D, &D, okay. but, like, what I'm going to do, it is all homebrewed, so, like, all of the places that they go in the land, all of their imagination, all of the encounters that they face, all the story that they tell is all from their imaginations. Okay, um, awesome. Their DM, Matt Mercer, is kind of a god among DMs. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's so talented. Um, but yeah, it that really just sort of inspired me to do more with Lucy Jane in terms of the geek side. Right. Um, mostly Lucy Jane stays the plushies at the moment. Um, but the cosplay, I do, I do cosplay as her just because uh, that's, it's all tied. It's all connected. So tell me more about, speaking of cosplay. Yeah. This beautiful <laughs> dress that you actually made My here. My labor of love that I made part. here. This and is gorgeous. Anyone watching uh, this video, you can go to either the Lucy Jane Facebook page. You can also go to the Forrester's uh, mm -hmm. Facebook page because there's tons of, I tagged you guys. Oh, yeah, constantly. yeah. There's no cross posting. Um, yeah. And I uh, made this inside of eight weeks. You can watch 12 hours of ruffle sewing yeah. on our Facebook page. Pretty much. Because, I mean, this was, oh my god, you worked so hard on this. So the on this story on this so is that beautiful. I, I picked it, thank you, I, I picked um, the character of Keyleth. Okay. She is a half-elf druid from Critical Role. Uh, she's played by Marisha Ray. Uh, uh, her half-elven druid is just, she has an antler headpiece that I, I had to try it. Mm -hmm. um, 
somehow in my mind, uh, and, and somewhere when I was looking for what am I going to do this year for Dragon Con because I've already done the Doctor Who thing, I already did Victoria. Oh, uh, just before we leave that, this is Otto, by the way. I'll, I'll get from him. Uh, from the yeah, from the very first um, from the very first cosplay. He makes a wonderful hat. <laughs> He's awesome. Um, but yeah, he was. This was my first octopus uh, okay. pattern of hers that I had done, and it's actually bigger than her original pattern. I had to learn how to blow it up. And I, I originally wanted him to be like full octopus size. Like right. I wanted him to be probably twice as big as this. But this turned out to be the perfect size. This was as large as I could get it to make a pattern to okay. actually cut out the fabric. And it was hilarious bec because if I had been able to make him as big as I had initially envisioned in my head of, oh, this octopus is gonna be life size and huge. I'm toting this around Atlanta for four <laughs> days. Like, you know, in my hands. It's gonna get heavy. It's gonna get heavy and you don't think that polyfill, you know, you don't think that light fluffy cotton stuff oh, no, would get heavy. It adds up. Any any ounce yes, starts to add up in some of those up. cosplays. Like, but at this I, size, I understand. he just sits on my shoulder and hangs out. Yeah. So I actually have hands, it's my hands free octopus. I think you actually had him with you when I met you at the yes. uh, food festival that we yes, met at. Yes, we had a Taste of the Soul festival where I met you guys. And I did, in fact, have Otto hanging out with me. Um, he is well-traveled. He's been, I take him to dance events. I take him, he's been everywhere. He's been to like six states. Oh, wow. Um, and he I, could have his own Facebook page. He could. <laughs> I don't have time to keep up with it. No. He totally could. He would have followers. So, getting back to this year's yeah, Dragon Con. Yeah, this year's Dragon Con. Um, so, I knew Otto was going to come with me. I was going to dress up in the TARDIS dress for at least one of the days. But Dragon right. Con is a four, almost five day spectacle. So, yeah. I'm going to have multiple changes. And I thought, I, I had come across uh, a Sky Pirate. Um, design that someone had done, um, kind of a hot couture sort of imagining. Okay. Um, there were box pleats rather than gathered ruffles, and the middle section was cut out. Okay. I'm still going to the gym uh -huh. and working on <laughs> my fitness. I'm not comfortable enough to to do like the cat bare, suit. To do bare belly. Oh, uh, okay. It's not in my wheelhouse this year. Maybe next year when I get hot for con. But this year, I'm like, you know, I've had two kids, and that's just not really something Aww. I want to show off right now until I get ready. So I modified it to not have the open belly. Um, okay. And, but it does have the one sleeve, which is very similar to the original design. And it does actually, I'm going to show it, that it actually has a slit. And oh, so your leg. We'll get, get the, the picture. You get the yeah, sexy legs I got some, out. I got some <laughs> leg going on. Um, but I did wear bloomers. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> You knew your size. I knew so. my size, and I was like, well, okay, how, how do I make this happen? And so I found a pattern of a Regency dress. Mm -hmm. uh, Regency, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, is kind of Jane Austen era. Okay. Um, about 1800. So that's what this pattern is based on. Yeah. Uh, so, well, kind of. <laughs> I Frankenstein the heck out of it because uh, it was like a Polonaise sort of jacket. It was a coat. Oh. But it had a train. I saw the train on it on the picture and I was like, that has a train. I need a train. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so I cut out, um, believe it or not, that base that all of that is completely stitched onto. Um, this, this top portion mm. here where the buckles are, that's a bed sheet. Wait, what, which is a bed sheet? The top. This? The, the, yeah, the top and the top two ruffles. Uh, that's, 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 that's a, a bed sheet. That's a bed sheet. Well, I mean, if you can't find the right fabric, but it's in a sheet, yeah. I mean, I know I've bought, uh, like, thrift store sheets to use this fabric before. Yeah, cause... well, actually, that's where they that's where they came from. Yeah. In terms of the characters, I just really related to Keila. Uh, she's a bit awkward. Mm -hmm. um, she has a lot of social anxiety, but she really wants to lead her people into, you know, peace and have a, a better world than what she found. and. So is she a player character in this show, or is she a non-player? 
She is a player character. Okay, so there is someone who actually has her character sheet and yes. plays her. Yeah. That's really cool. I didn't know. I might not, I'm going to have to check out this podcast now because it sounds pretty awesome. Well, you know what? Uh, it's a good time to get started with them because they just wrapped up a five-year campaign. Oh, wow. They've been streaming on their Twitch channel at Geek and Sundry for almost three years. Okay. Like two and a half, three years. Um. There is about 400 hours worth of content. I'm going to have to put it on my phone and listen to now it they on do, my commute. They do have it on podcast form. You, okay. you can listen. Um, they started on Twitch with the idea of, well, if anybody will watch it, we're right, going to play that, anyway. That's what we're doing. We're, we're, we're going to play anyway. So right. if anybody will watch it, cool. Right. So one of their characters is a ranger okay. named Vex, and she has an animal companion who is a bear, and his okay. name is Trinket. Cool. And so she says, uh, one of one of the critters mm-hmm. said, if we get to this many subscribers, I think that was the 5,000 mark, if we get to 5,000 subscribers, and they were at like 4,500 at that mm-hmm. point, you don't think you'll get 500 subscribers in one night. No, that would, be, that would be that insane. That would be insane. It would be, <laughs> if they did it. <laughs> So this, this critter offered and said, if we get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the show, right? Laura, the voice actor, mm-hmm. gets a life-size trinket. Sure enough, the next Thursday, there is a giant bear behind oh Laura my in the gosh. studio that they shipped to California. <laughs> like, these people are crazy. So one of their fan, the, the biggest fan uh, catchphrase is, when the boss hits zero hit points... Mm-hmm. Matt allows the players to describe how it goes down okay. in the story, and it's like it's oral storytelling. So it's right. like you describe how you kill it with right. arrows or your right. dagger or whatever. And so his catchphrase is, "How do you want to do this?" We live to hear Matt say, "How do you <laughs> do this?" It will be everybody will be on edge. <laughs> it's been a long boss fight. We're like. <gasps> He's got to be, like, close to zero hit points. Who's going to get it? And, and this is the experience you're wanting to give people when you do this tabletop gaming. Yes. Okay. Yes. Cool. How do you want to do this? And, and that kind of, I mean, that kind of leads into another question I have for you was, um, obviously, that's very exciting to be doing tabletop gaming. What, what is the most exciting moment you've had, personally, either as Lucy Jane or as a cosplayer, uh, the most thrilling for you? Okay. Uh, that actually ties all together in a nice, neat little bow, conveniently. But I remember uh, on my Instagram uh, getting my first follower that I didn't know. I was like, who is this stranger following me on social streams? <laughs> cool! <laughs> hey, person I haven't met yet, because I love making new friends. and um, I'm that awkward. It's it's a dichotomy. It's, I'm, I'm socially awkward, and I, I have social anxiety, mm-hmm. but I love people. <laughs> and I'm just like... I don't understand how that's why we have the internet. (laughs) Correct. So, yeah, that was a thing where I I decided uh, I'm going to put myself out there. I'm going to do Instagram. And so uh, when that person started following me, Mm -hmm. more strangers that I don't know. um, And so I'm at Dragon Con. So let let me set it up for you. Okay, I'm ready. I have a favorite band who got me through a really rough period in my life. Um... Steam Power Giraffe. Okay. They're out of San Diego, California. Okay. Um, they're brilliant. They're wonderful. And about three weeks, so I had all of my Dragon Con stuff. I was like, okay, guys, I'm going to be Keyleth. And I have, you know, um, also I did my D&D character, Thalon Gillith. I made her so that I had another costume mm-hmm. to change into. Um, she's an elf wizard, and so that was fun. And I'm... I'm if you guys see all the Forrester stuff from the last, from, from August. August at Forrester's was nuts. Yeah, I you were here. I was here going, ah, Every right. day. Every day. It was crazy. I like what you're doing. I think I'm going to do that on the bottom of mine, too. Kind of give it layers. Um, this is going to be a lot more messy than I thought <laughs> it was going to be. And so, I'm kind of regretting my decision. So, uh, they make the announcement then uh, in the middle of August. Like, it's three weeks to con. Right? Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I have my app, and I or, or it's about to come out. And I um, so I didn't go to any panels last year because it was just all the splendor, right. you know, and everything. And I, I had auto, and I was talking, meeting new people. So this year I said, okay, I'm at Dragon Con. I'm going to go to some panels. So 
And I'm yeah. trying to figure out, well, 30th anniversary of Princess Bride. What? That's um, cool. That's a pretty good first panel to go to, I think. Mm -hmm. And so I'm having all this fun going to these panels. and um, But Friday night at 1.30 in the morning, uh, they make this, or, or sorry, let me rephrase that. Two weeks, no, three weeks before Colin, mm -hmm. they make the announcement, Steam Power Direct's coming to Dragon Con. Mm -hmm. I freaked. I was <laughs> like, wait, what? So they had a concert Friday at 1.30 in the morning. Whoa. That's, which, that to me, that's super for me, late. <laughs> I'm like, well, for that's me, crazy. Why would someone be awake at 1.30 in the morning? It's Dragon Con. Like, I once know. you get there, it is a giant party for I, days. I have been, and that's... That's one of the reasons that we don't sleep anymore. until Tuesday. <laughs> so I was excited, but I was upset because I was like, ah, one thirty in the morning. Okay. So I rearranged a lot of my Friday plans. No big, because I, all of a sudden it was worth it. You know, I was like, right. this is amazing. You're like, this is the thing I'm doing. This going is to. the thing I want. Well, they had some technical issues, and oh, the no. concert didn't start until 2 <gasps> 45. Whoa. That's okay, but it's an hour and a half show. And so I got to meet my heroes. Guys, I got to meet Steam Powered Giraffe, which is like the bomb, at 5 a.m. 5 o'clock, Saturday morning. But that's super exciting. It was super exciting, except we had a parade to be in at 9 o'clock. <laughs> so I get back to the hotel. I have maybe a two and a half hour nap by the time I came down off the high. Right. You know, and settled down and actually went to sleep, and I slept for two and a half hours. Well, then I had makeup to do. I'm wearing this in the parade, y'all. So I'm, <laughs> I'm up, and I'm putting on prosthetic elf ears, right, because she's the half elf, and I'm, I'm putting on elf ears, and I'm putting on makeup, and I'm doing my hair, and I'm, you know, making sure I have everything well. After two and a half hours, one doesn't always make the most informed wardrobe decisions. Uh, I might have grabbed the wrong under things. Uh-oh. Which was okay until about halfway through the parade. <laughs> when it's sweaty and hot and everything I have that's holding my form <gasps> begins to drift southward because oh, of all the sweat. Oh, no. Yeah. It was that's... great. It was great. Yay, Georgia great. in the South. Great like, to work. The South in. <laughs> yeah. Yay, the south in the middle of summer. So, community. did you end up flashing a bunch of people at I Dragon Con? I did not, thankfully, oh, because that's, that's good. the shirt, you know, I had to, uh, basically, I had this girl. So, this is Raishan. She's actually a character from Critical Role. Um, okay. So, I had her kind of here, and I was just sort of like discreetly hoisting the colors, as it were, you know, trying, right. to, trying to make things work well. I'm on my way limping because it's a, a mile and a half parade route. Right. Or two miles, whatever. I don't remember exactly how far. It's, it's a long one. I was in heels, so I have blisters now. And I'm hobbling and falling down. So, like, my costume is basically just falling apart around me. And I'm, okay, like, main part looks good. We have the dress bustled. It's awesome. And I'm limping back to my hotel to try and change right. the under things so that I can function in this costume. And it would only take a minute, but the hotel is, you know, kind of down because uh, all of the hotels, by the way, are sold out for next year. You can't get one. Yeah. Day. It's done. I was at a conference, it's like, crazy. when they went on sale, so it's I did not get not one. So. Um, I was really hoping to get a suite and have, like, a Forrester's Creative uh, cosplay repair shop. Oh, that would be amazing. So if I can find a suite, I might, I might do that. So uh, I'm on my way back to the hotel, and I hear... So this is kind of my worst cosplay moment, right? Like, right like here. worst. Worst cosplay moment, because I was just, ah, I'm falling apart, and this is uncomfortable, and people are stopping me. <gasps> Look at your antlers! Oh my god, your dragon! Yeah. And of course, I have business cards that I'm handing out, yeah. running out of uh, quickly. And Which you're like, okay, this is great, this but is also great, I would but really also like to sit. <laughs> and so I'm hobbling to the hotel, and it's, I'm sweaty, and I'm blistered, and I'm not, I'm, I'm just a zombie because I've had a two-hour nap of sleep, and I'm running on, you know, I've, I've slept two hours out of the last 30. Right. And I'm just exhausted, and I'm happy because the parade was fun, and I got to right. TV, that's cool, but... 
This is the worst moment of my cosplay career so far. But then it turns into the best moment because I hear this voice, Lady Keyleth, Lady Keyleth, wait, Lady Keyleth. And I'm like, Keyleth, that's me. Wait, what? <laughs> and I turn around and there is our, uh, someone in another Critical Role character's costume of Vaxalon, who okay. is the twin of the ranger with the bear. Um, okay. He's the, their, their rogue. Okay, um, cool. Keyleth is their druid. He's their rogue. Um, so <laughs> he comes up to me, and I, I, I just wait because I'm like, I'm Keyleth. I don't know this person. This is kind of cool. And I have these antlers, you know. Um, and he comes up, and just this huge smile, adorable, Aww. just bright, flashy, giant smile, and says, I'm so excited that I got to see you and actually meet you in person. I've been following you on Instagram. I've seen you make the dress, and I'm get to see it in person. Well, that's fantastic. And I that, just that's so great. went crazy. I was like, this is the best thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> I have a fan. We got a selfie. And he posted. It was so cool. That, that is so, so sweet. He's, he's adorable. And um, so it's so nice meeting him. And I apologize. I don't actually remember his handle right now. Just because it's been a minute. Well, I'm sure he'll watch and comment. Oh, hopefully. <laughs> so... I, I'm, I, I feel bad that I don't remember his handle. It's great. But, and um, so, yeah, that was simultaneously. So, like, my worst cosplay moment and my best cosplay moment happened literally within five minutes of each other. So what about, like, scariest? Like, have you had any Ooh. have you had anything happen to you at a con that you were like, I would like this to not happen again? Uh, I thankfully have not had a scary That's moment. Good. The, the most uh, unpleasant moment that happened to me at a con uh, was this year. We were on MARTA and there were there was a Tennessee uh, Georgia Tech game going on. Right. And unfortunately there were some people in Tennessee shirts. Uh, it was like a, a like a, a school trip or something. I'm not really sure. Mm -hmm. um, but there was a large group of them and I still had on elf ears because that is prosthetic, and it's not exactly easy to remove them. It's not like a hat. Right. Like, you actually have to wear um, that out. So I still had them on. I had, uh, I was still flaunting my geek. I had on a shirt that says, how do you want to do this in Elvish? Mm -hmm. uh, which translates to, um, if I pronounce this correctly, Sut umle mierna umsina. Elvish for how do you want to do this? And I, I'm a giant nerd. I actually made an Elvish shirt um, and I'm wearing it with my elf ears on the way home and okay. I get I'm sitting right there across from this guy in Tennessee garb and he leans over to his friend and makes some very derogatory comments about the uh, the geeks in Atlanta that weekend and Aww. I'm like dude man I'm right here I can hear you <laughs> Yeah, they don't care. Yeah, so that was kind of, I was like, aw, like, I That's wasn't going to make comment about your sports ball, but. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, I mean, that, thankfully, that's the most negative thing, and that wasn't very. Well, that's, yeah, that's It wasn't very, bad. it wasn't too bad. Yeah, so. I was, I was at con when there were some big games going on, and there were guys driving around, like, throwing bottles at people and standing in line. Yeah. And, yeah, it's, it's a hit or miss, I think. Yeah, so, I agree with you, but thankfully, uh, nothing scary has yeah. ever happened. Um, it's It's been a great experience so far. I mean, now you get people who kind of don't really know how to... How to behave. Behave. Um, but I think that as long as everybody just stays calm and... I think Dragon Con has gotten a lot better about it, like, safety-wise. Yeah. Um, it only takes once for something to happen before they're like, all right, well, we're going to put in measures to prevent this now. Yes, without shutting down like the whole thing too. Right. I mean, like they they're really good about being able to to just take those things and, and make them not happen again without punishing people who didn't have anything to do with it. Right. So that's good. But yeah, no. So I've had very positive experiences so far. Since we've been talking about costumes and everything, mm -hmm. do you have grand plans for Halloween this year? I don't, um, because. Oh no, it's trashy. Uh, I'm actually probably just going to wear the Keyleth dress dances very well. Oh great! 
right. Um, I did go to some of the, the um, parties after hours at Con, and my regular swing dance partner. So I actually That's teach. Cute. I actually teach swing dance for Down South Swing in Atlanta, and um, my regular partner of three years. Again, multi talented. <laughs> I, so... I just do what I love. I just do what I love. Honestly, they're all distractions to to keep me from being inside my own head too much. Um, I think creative oh, people... those things never stand up. Yeah. I think creative people are basically uh, one giant party. Because um, that's what I do. I just... I, I, uh... So they have like a costume dance night? Uh, well, there's dance parties all over con. Um, I mean, for, for Halloween. Oh, 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 for Halloween, yeah. Um, so I'm actually part of a... Um, Atlanta tradition called Atlanta Varsity Showdown. It's a Lindy Hop workshop. Uh, Lindy Hop is the dance of like the 1940s big band era. So it's pretty neat. So but, there's like a Halloween. Yeah. So theme. every every Halloween weekend um, for the last I don't know how many years uh, we um, host this workshop, and so we have instructors, um, international uh, winning, you know, like world champion instructors come and host a workshop uh, with classes, and then um, we hold dances with live music. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's a good time. It is an absolute blast. I wouldn't miss it for anything. And uh, I usually just wear something that dances well. Obviously the antlers So this not dances there. pretty well. It does. I bustle it up in the back mm -hmm. uh, on a belt, and it, and it, and it works. Um, passingly well, uh, which I found out at con. <laughs> so um, I'll have to look into um, new dance shoes. Mine are about worn out. So I gotta do that before ABS. But yeah, Atlanta Varsity Showdown, it's incredible. And I look forward to it every single year. Well, that sounds really fun. Yep. It's cool. Is there, um, so I think we're a I'm at the end of my questions. Is there anything else you want to tell people about that you're, you know, doing right now, experiencing? Um, I do have uh, one more geek thing. Okay, yeah. Actually, uh, so I'm going to be partnered along with the whole D and D tabletop thing. Okay. We are doing them uh, Wednesdays at the pub. Right. Um, but uh, you guys can actually listen out for Lucy Jane to be affiliated with a podcast called Loot and Dagger. Oh, yeah, I saw something about that. Um, you made a little mouse or I did. something. I did. I made the rat familiar of one of my friends, and he loved it. How um, did you become associated with Loot and Dagger? I went to high school with these people. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, James Stiver, who is brilliant, uh, and um, it's his podcast. Uh, okay. Loot and Dagger is kind of his brainchild. Um, he and the other players... Um, just got together and played and made it a podcast. And How I, long has their podcast been going on? Is it pretty new? A little while. Um, they did a different gaming system other than D&D &D 5e for a little while called Numenera. Um, but it's gone now off of the podcast. Uh, it's in archives somewhere. Um, they've been doing it, I guess, probably a year kind of or so. And so this, this whole experience of... Um, D and D, the the five E um, that we play, uh, just they just wrapped up season one. Okay. Um, so are they on craft, Twitch? They are not. They are on Podbean. Okay. Uh, it's a podcast. Um, so yeah, if you just search podcast, I think you can get. I think they're on different different podcast formats. Okay. I don't know how you got yours to be like sparkly all over. I just kind of clumped uh, it together. <laughs> I rubbed the edges uh, up a little so gotcha. like it would uh, kind of come up. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. And now we're going to be glittery the rest of the day. Glitter is the herpes of the craft world. <laughs> so, um, but yeah. Uh, so, Loot and Dagger. Um, Loot and Dagger. Look for some. So, are I, you going to be streaming from uh, the bar on Wednesdays? Probably not. Okay. Uh, uh, certainly not Loot Dagger. Uh, Loot Dagger is their own thing that I'll be joining in on. Okay. And I will post updates 
um, to that end. I do have a special Lucy Jane thing happening for Luton Dagger, but it's not finished yet. Oh yeah, let's cover, uh, what stores can you find Lucy Jane products in? Where can you Lucy, buy Lucy Jane right now? Lucy Jane just got picked up by Bloom, Bloom. which is here in Douglasville. Bloom is okay. the gift shop behind um, the Blue Rose Art Bistro, which is okay. also brand new and just cool. opened. Um, so yeah, I'm there. And I do have an Etsy as well. Uh, right. Basically, just the website takes you straight to the Etsy. Just cool. Just Ooh, because all of those. nice and neat and easy. Um, but yeah, like everything just happened all at one time. And I'm very, uh, I'm I'm extremely adult ADD. Yeah. <laughs> um. In in, I just. It's, it's a thing that I've struggled with you know, most of my adult life. And um, I embrace it, and I just use it as part of the inspiration to create. All right. Well, you guys heard it from the source. <laughs> uh, thank you for watching. Uh, yeah. Thanks visit, for out. Visit some of the links we're going to list for Lucy Jane and all of the different projects Lucy Jane's involved with. Uh, leave a comment if there's a local Metro Atlanta artist that you would like to hear from, and we'll see about lining up an interview. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thanks, bye.